ceiling, walking in sand about six inches deep. Yeah, so it's a comp for us. It's a combination of two things. The soils aren't great up there for trail building, and then it's been getting a lot of use. So that yeah. kind of intense use kind of just makes it turn into powder. When it rains, it'll um, hopefully solidify a little bit, but we'll probably bring some equipment back up in the spring to see if we can tamp it down a little better. Mm -hmm. Like some compactors or something? Yeah, I mean, usually we don't open trails for one year. Um, no we let them what we call cure. But it was just with COVID, it was like everybody just wanted to be outside. So yeah, just said, okay, we'll just go back and touch it up. Yay. All right. well, good Hi, Ann. Hello, Ann. Ann. Hey, Ann. All right. Well, you got everybody here. You do have some members of the public on too, John. So uh, if you want to go to get started and just start with the top paragraphs and uh, we can roll. Okay, um, we have our quorum. So we'll uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, first, I want to give some instructions on how to make a public comment during the meeting. At points in the meeting, when the meeting chair requests public comment, members of the public participating in the live meeting either via internet or telephone shall indicate their desire to speak. If participating via internet, please click the raise hand feature located within the Zoom application screen. If connected via telephone, please dial star nine. Thank you. So the first item tonight we have is the um, adoption of our agenda. Any questions or comments on that? No, no, thank you. Okay, Anna, have we got you there? I'm not sure. Um, just give me one second. Uh, just dying. I just gotta plug in. Sorry. Okay, take it. Whatever time you need. Yeah, my full attention. All right. Okay, so we're, we're uh, looking to ad adopt our agenda. A motion to adopt. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, moving on to uh, item number two, uh, public comment on non-agenda items. Anyone from the public out there have something to say? Uh, I don't see it and just as a reminder you can use the raise hand function or if you're calling in from the phone you can press uh, dial star nine to make a public comment and it doesn't look like it john okay then we'll move on to uh oh, hold item. on hold on hold on i moved too soon one second okay you have somebody on a phone calling in okay let me see if i can unmute Okay, you need to unmute yourself, please, uh, caller. You can do that by pressing star six. Hey there, this is Ian Fine. I was just calling in to listen in. I don't actually have a comment, and I just oh. didn't intend to disrupt everything, but just wanted to say hello, and um, thank you all for your service, and uh, thanks for letting me listen in. Great. Thanks, Ian. Thanks. Welcome. All right. Um, that's the only one, Rick. All right, we'll move on to uh, item number three, uh, draft minutes of our meeting last month on the 22nd of September. We're looking to approve the minutes. Any comment from the commission? No, motion to approve. Okay, so, uh, then can I have a second? Yep, I'm Josh. One last time, uh, second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. You got to ask for comment, John. Uh, public comment on our uh, uh, draft minutes of our last Park and Recreation Commission meeting. 
You don't have any, but thanks for asking. Okay. Uh, next, we'll move on to item number four, draft minutes of the October 13th board meeting. Uh, this is just a review. I don't know if uh, either of the other commissioners have had time to watch any of that on the YouTube, but it's uh, definitely... You know, um, I'll just make a comment. I, I attended that meeting and, and spoke regarding the, just the process for how the Park Commission would get involved with the JPA in the wildfire, wildfire vegetation projects. And, um, and then I talked to Eric after the meeting and it sounds like what will happen is we will have an opportunity to form a joint commission with the, or at least some meetings, or I'm not sure exactly how the process, but Eric, I think has an idea um, that there will be a park fire commission joint meeting to talk about those types of projects. I think that certainly makes sense that uh, we need to all put our heads together and get it all at once. Yep. And then Eric, do you want to just come you will let us know when when that happens or yeah yeah as you and i uh, talked about offline so uh and i need to uh, talk more with some of the people on the fire side uh, primarily the chief and his inspectors um and one of the things we're hoping to do is you know obviously we have these first round of you know relatively minor projects um, and then looking at what we wanted to do was just kind of try to uh you know, get some mapping done of all of our open space interfaces. Um, and then uh, we will sit down as staff and kind of go through those and, you know, uh, with their help identifying which ones are kind of high risk, which ones are high need, um, and what various treatments could be. And, you know, our treatments are like shaded fuel breaks, broom pooling, uh, uh, things like that. These are very non-invasive types of uh, activities. Uh, you know, just like I said, mostly geared around, you know, within that 100 foot buffer zone of residential properties. So um, then what we wanted to do was we we're, you know, thinking uh, probably sometime in like February or March before the new rounds of projects really get going, try to have a joint commission meeting with both the fire and the park and rec commission at the same time, um, where we can kind of go through our lines of thinking, what we're looking at, how they've been prioritized, what types of treatments in each area, and, and potential uh, costs, uh, you know, versus what types of resources we have, uh, which are, you know, relatively speaking, pretty minimal. But yeah, that was the overall thought. I think that's uh, that's kind of uh, where you and I left it too, John. To add, if I think I missed something here. No, that sounds right, and and it and it sounds like you'll let us know when time is for us to be part of that joint meeting yeah, we don't, have, yeah, we don't yeah. have to bring it up yeah no it'll be like i said i i don't think we'll have it ready to go by january especially because the fire commission typically meets the first tuesday of the month so we'd be looking somewhere around february or march and that gives us time to work on that while they have a little bit of downtime on their side too uh, where they could just spend a little bit more time planning and a little less time implementing right that sounds good. You know, I know this is a, you know, mostly what we're talking about is vegetation management, and this is yep. it's kind of a little bit of a random thing, but I hadn't mentioned it yet because I'm not sure it's actually Marinwood CSD jurisdiction, but just up through the community, something came my way around um, potentially creating better egress out of the valley where, like, so the, um, like, juvenile hall, you can't really drive a car like through so if you were on idleberry and you wanted to stay on idleberry so say lucas valley road becomes blocked with traffic there's a major fire and everyone's trying to evacuate clearing an evacuation route through there so right now those footpaths there's like metal poles that don't move and so you can't actually get a car through that area so someone brought to my attention could we have something that lowers down or a chain that can be you know put down or something like that, create a way for vehicles to drive, um, have an alternate route out of the valley besides Lucas Valley Road. 
So there's the, the two areas over by Juvie, and then there's also, um, uh, I think at the end of uh, Idleberry. Right. A that, little path. Yeah, well, there, I can touch on that with you briefly, Ann, and I'm happy to bring you, you know, some more details offline. Um, I'll touch on it within the scope of this topic. Uh, the two things about that, um, one, you're right, those aren't our property, at least the ones on Idleberry that surround on both sides of all the county facilities. So they're uh, not no, that's not our property. Um, however, people who live in CSA 13 have actually done a lot of work. They're one of the larger fire wise communities and they've done some levels of informal evacuation studies and have actually worked with county staff on uh, some of those used to be solid barriers and now they're removable poles. So if that did need to become a emergency evacuation route, it could. Uh, I will say is through the MWPA, they are working, the Wildfire Prevention Authority, they are working on one of the core goals of the funding is a countywide um, evacuation uh, and emergency response study. Um, and they've broken that down into the regions. Chief White is heading up this region. I'll support him as best I can. Um, and they're looking at bringing in third party, like, you know, kind of traffic engineers who study these types of things to really look at what would be the best routes of evacuation. Uh, and that will obviously go up to Lucas Valley Estates as well, um, because we've heard a little bit from them. They are kind of, you know, I mean, they got one way in, one way out. Um, mm -hmm. So that's going to be looked at on a much larger scale, um, funded through the Wildfire Prevention Authority and done by professionals. Um, but I would, uh, I don't know that I expect that immediately, but they're definitely already moving and have formed subcommittees for each of the regions to start working on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that area also at the end of Idleberry is not ours. Uh, uh, which end? So if you go all the way down, I guess if you're driving west on Idleberry and you're, you know, you go past Juvie and you're on Idleberry. So you go past yes. elementary school and you go all the way down there's like Idleberry ends and then there's a short, very short paved path. It's about a quarter acre. Yeah, that uh, area is ours uh -huh. uh, right there. And we've actually communicated a little bit. I got a communication uh, that was eventually passed through to me through the county. And that'll be one of the areas that we are looking at. Um, keeping in mind, there's not a driveway on the other end of that. Uh, and if people are coming out of Lucas Valley Estates and coming into there, that's actually going to drop them into a much more heavily populated area with everybody else uh, trying to get out right along that huge open space interface there as well. Um, no expert, but kind of the, some of the feedback I got is their best bet is still just heading straight down Bridgegate because that's what that connects to is Bridgegate, mm -hmm. uh, getting on Lucas Valley Road and getting out rather than going into a heavily populated neighborhood streets. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but that'll all, that'll be studied too. Yes, yeah, so at the very end of Idleberry on the most Western end where it ends at that <laughs> gate, that, that little small area is ours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, if there's uh, no other comments from the commission, I'll ask for any public comment then on the draft minutes of the board meeting. Going once, going twice. You're good, John. All right. Um, next item, number five, the upcoming commissioner term expirations and appointment opportunities. Um, if you can see from Eric's report that, uh, Anne, you and I are, time is short. Well, maybe. So, Eric, I thought when I signed up, I signed up, there was two, two different <clears throat> terms available. There was one that ended at the end of this year and one that ended at the end of last year. I yeah, and you are the one that ends at the end of this year. No, no, no. But at least if you check our email, and I don't know what the official record is, so maybe I'm officially ending at the end. Of, but right, in our right, email, right. I said, no, and sign me up for the longer believe it or one. Not, for, just, uh, since July of 2019. No way. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 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 Nice so that, yeah I know. It goes back a little ways. And uh, <laughs> so when you came on, there was an empty term that ended that, that, that calendar year of December 2019. And you took the term that ends uh, on December of 2020, which was great. We were appreciative of it. Uh, but believe it or not, that year and a half is coming up. 
All right. Yeah, yeah. So we will, uh, uh, those are on. The reappointment process is fairly simple. Um, literally, you can send me an email that just says something as simple as, uh, I would uh, like to be reappointed to the commission. As an incumbent, you don't have to worry too much. I mean, you're already on the commission. Uh, not a, you're welcome to add some more if you want. If you want, you know, why or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. For people who are new, uh, we ask that they just, you know, give us a little bit of, uh, you know, why they'd like to join the commission and uh, uh, what, uh, if any, uh, expertise they have that could benefit. But uh, otherwise, for if you're anything, I would keep it really, you know, just a simple email to me, one or two sentences that says I wish to be reappointed. Uh, in front of the board at their meeting in November. Okay. And then that'll become effective January of 2021. So you're going to stick with us longer, Anne? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I guess that we might not have a quorum. <laughs> Provided it's helpful to have me here, which is, you know, it's yeah. good. Yeah. I have put out some other notices via social media on our website, on our Facebook page, um, next door. Uh, and I gave you a copy of, you know, what's kind of just the generic flyer that I have um, right after this little staff report here. Uh, I'm happy to send out that as a standalone PDF. If you uh, had people you wanted to try to give it to, um, you're welcome to direct them towards me if there is any level of interest. We have had some people who have expressed interest in the past, just timing wasn't right. So I've reached back out to them, hoping that they, uh, timing might be a little bit better. Uh, that they might still have some interest in jumping on the commission. So uh, we will see what happens. Hopefully, hopefully we can hopefully we can get a few more on here. It'd be nice to get back to five. Yeah. And yeah. six with an alternate, if at all possible. The good old days. Exactly, John. Exactly. And that two-year period would bring them up to the next election cycle to be a board member. Hey, well, there you go. You're already planning your replacement, huh, Bill? <laughs> Give it up, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where that is. Uh, like I said, I mean, the best way to get people on here, you know, in my, kind of my old nonprofit days is I always learned that, you know, strong uh, boards have strong board members because somebody went out and asked them to think about joining. So if you guys know people, I'm happy to uh, talk to them as well. We give them a little floor, tell them, you know, what some of our things are, uh, and it would be just good to get some more people and some more thoughts and ideas on here. So uh, I have the materials. If you want it, holler at me, and I'm happy to shoot it over to you as an email. Maybe if we served cookies or something. Yeah, remote cookies. Uh, there's nothing else in, from the commission, anything from the public regarding this item? Uh, it does not look like it, John. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, item number six, the Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Report. <laughs> Mr. Fretwell, how are you tonight? I'm good. John, uh, John, Ann, Bill, uh, good to see you. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, starting with the with recreation, just uh, give you guys a sense of what we've been doing the last month. Um, we've had a lot of programs uh, starting up this this last month and in the month before that, um, which has been great. As uh, the guidelines continue to ease up, we've been able to um, start some indoor programming um, with limited capacity and um, do a lot of outdoor programming. So we've been really trying to take advantage of that and um, using our our field space for a bunch of new programs. Um, which I've mentioned before, but those are all actually going really well. And we've been adding sessions for um, our all sorts of sports camp has um, uh, been just taking off. Which we're really excited about. We have an outdoor music program taking place in the park um, in the mornings, a golf uh, youth golf program. And so it's been fun to see those um, get a lot of enrollment and people really be excited about that. And we'll um, hopefully continue those in the spring as well. Um, we'll. We'll keep them going until the weather shuts us down. But um so that's been a great thing. Um, we're just finishing out the pool season. We have, uh, this was our last week of um, lap swim reservations. And um, we have one more week. They're keeping the pool open to just finish out the Water Devils uh, swim team season, uh, kind of our fall um, custom season we, we put together. 
and, uh, and then we'll be we'll be shutting down for the off season. But um, just really happy to have gotten through that uh, successfully, and with with things being really popular, basically filled up um, every week this fall for for lap swim. So um, it's been great to be able to have the pool open in some capacity this season. I'm also looking forward to uh, uh, closing it down for the for the off season and some maintenance and, and things. So. Um, for the special event, on the special event front, we um, are currently uh, in, I think, I guess it's our, our um, second week, I want to say, um, of our, uh, our virtual art show. So the, um, our spring and fall art shows of, of the last uh, year had to be canceled. Uh, one first one due to fires and power outages, and the second well, the one in the spring uh, due to, to COVID. And so Susan Press, um, who's put these shows, helped curate them for us, put together a virtual art show uh, to kind of finally let these artists' works come to light and, and be able to show them. So we've been putting them on our Facebook page and um, showing five different pieces each day. And I think actually we started that um, la yeah, last week and uh, we're doing five pieces a day with a little blurb of each piece and something about the artist. and. It's actually gotten a lot of traction and a lot of people have been in, engaging with that and um, we've had a lot of really good feedback. So even though we can't all be hanging out together, drinking wine and seeing the works in person, um, it's been cool to be able to give uh, these artists um, a little bit of a platform and, and show off that. So um, big thanks to Susan for, for putting that together and, and for Carolyn uh, for putting it up on Facebook and, and doing the, the legwork of editing the photos and getting everything uh, put in place. And then this Friday, we're going to, uh, well, while we can't do our normal Halloween Harvest Festival, we are doing a short and sweet um, drive-through trick-or-treat uh, in our parking lot, where we'll just be um, having some decorations set up, and the staff will be dressed up uh, out there giving out some candy and, and treats, and people can kind of just drive through and say hello, and uh It'll be um, just something we can we can give out some candy and say hi to the community. So, not our normal um, big hurrah, but something that people can take advantage of. I'll be having this Friday from three to five um, in the parking lot, and um, so we're looking forward to that. Um, I have included in um, this report what I what I included also in the uh, my report that went into the board packet um, or the board agenda. From the from last um, from this month's board meeting, and you can see that on the last page of my um, activity report are summer financials, and these have not been updated yet to for the end of the pool season, which we won't have um, everything in for another couple weeks in terms of expenditures and, and all the revenue. But uh, this is a snapshot of just how the summer camps went and how the pool season went up until um, about a few a few weeks ago. Um, so just something to look at. Um, I put in the same points of interest that I put in um, my report for the board meeting. Um, but overall, we're very pleased that we were able to offer um, summer camp with all the guidelines and regulations and, and concerns um, this summer. We were um, able to still pull that off and, and um, cover our expenses, which we're, we're very pleased with. Um, our enrollment was down by uh, about 70% due to um, the guidelines placed on us by the health department. And so we had a much smaller summer camp program, um, but we were able to, to run that as uh, best we could and uh, came out looking good um, financially with that. Uh, and um, for the, the pool season, we didn't have any of our normal revenue streams, such as uh, swim lessons, lifeguard training, guards and training camp, or recreation swim. Um, and all of our revenue shown in our report here was um, strictly lap swim reservations and um, uh, fees from the swim team for um, the couple weeks in the spring and then the, the fall um, practices that they've been holding. So um, that's kind of what's going on there. Um, uh, one thing I just wanted to, to highlight that um, we're doing, we're doing this, uh, um, the, the Lions Club asked to partner with us um, to do a little bit of an outreach project for um, the for PDS, which is the organization People with Disabilities Succeeding, um, to uh, donate uh, jack-o'-lanterns um, basically to, to that organization for their members to, to have jack-o'-lanterns for Halloween. And so the um, Los Cleanest Lions, um, I believe, purchased the pumpkins and we and they brought them to the community center. And here we had staff, some of our summer camp counselors, our after school program participants, and some of the rec staff um, 
uh, carved a bunch of pumpkins to uh, then be delivered by the lions to the to PDS. Um, as some of you might know, Guy Doers um, is a member of PDS, and he's uh, one of our employees that works part time um, doing the janitorial cleanup and helping keep our parks and community center clean. And he's been with us for over ten years. Uh, so we, we've been friends with that organization for a long time. They use our pool and park, and so it was really fun to be able to um, do a little bit of, uh, of a service for them. Um, we haven't been able to see Guy and his middle of the work during um, this COVID pandemic time, but we're hoping to see him soon, and I'm hoping he gets uh, one of our pumpkins. But So that was a fun thing we took, uh, that took place last week, and I think this got delivered this week. Um, uh, before I move on to, to parks maintenance, is there, anyone any questions about the, the recreation activity report? Um, look, I think today we, did we switch from red to orange tier for COVID and does that affect your programming? Um, it does open up uh, opportunities for indoor programming that was, um, that we were barred from before and the, for, for numbers of participants. So um, one thing that we're able to start doing adult like fitness classes such as um, jazzercise is going to be starting up we'll be able to run uh, some pilates classes we're working with our instructors to just see what people are comfortable with in terms of the instructors willing to come and teach and what um, the participation interest level is but yes we have um, the uh, some of the restrictions have been relaxed and allowing for um, indoor programs that were not allowed before outside of child care related uh, programming such as like preschool and after school program. So um, that's uh, something that we're, we're, you know, looking at and we've been anticipating and working with our instructors to get some of those classes up and running. I don't know if that, if that answers your question, John. Maybe um, I would like to go a little bit deeper on that. So what program do we have planned? Uh, it sounds like most of the programming is right. November, do I understand correct? And so what programming do we have planned for the winter months? I'm sorry, I, I missed, uh, you cut out for part of that question. You said um, you understand most of our programming is, is what so far? It sounded like you said we're going to keep it, like I, I guess we said we're going to keep it going as long as we can, but it's wrapping up the, all the other programs. So what? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I can answer. So um, all around the um, for the winter months, um, some of our, our outdoor programming that's currently taking place in the fields um, will be uh, more heavily affected by, you know, rain and uh, some of the cold weather. Uh, right now, we are able to move some of those programs indoors on days that where we have either bad air quality from the smoke or if we're going to have um, inclement weather, we, we have uh, set aside time on the calendar to be able to move some of these programs indoors. So we're going to continue to do that. They'll, they'll be limited in how many we can fit inside. So um, we've worked with the instructors to continue to be able to uh, offer the sports camp, um, the music uh, class, I believe, and um, the, I'm not 100% sure if, the, if we'll be able to have an indoor space for the golf program, but well, that's why I said we're going to keep those programs going as long as we can, weather permitting, and we'll continue to offer them as long as uh, we have outdoor space. Some of them will still continue um, in a, on an indoor basis uh, in the winter months. And I don't have exactly the numbers on that, um, but I'd be happy to get that to you uh, the next time. And um, Jazzercise uh, and Pilates are two of our adult classes that will be starting up in the next week um, or two. And then uh, the other classes I have, these are the classes listed on the um, very beginning of my recreation report um, in the bullet points. Uh, all of those uh, classes that um, the ones I didn't mention are the ones that are currently going on and will be continuing, such as the um, our morning camp uh, for preschool kids program that's uh, currently happening. Um, photography, uh, our after school program, um, and then the tennis classes uh, as well. So, um, I, this, and does that does that answer what you were what you're looking for? Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I remember, you know, in in previous years, and I'm just trying to stretch my memory a little bit. It seemed like we also had programming for things like there was like a martial arts class for kids and like dance classes and things like that. Uh, are, are, is any of that, the reason I ask is because as a, you know, my, my kids are in elementary school and there's like no spots anywhere. Everything's all booked for any activities that are available for kids. And as we're moving into the winter months, lots of things are shutting down, right? Because of the outdoor space. And mm -hmm. so, we're just looking at, you know, a lot of darkness and a lot of lack of contact for a lot of people. So I think the Marin, you know, has a wonderful opportunity to be a 
a place where people can go for an outlet and see people and do things and to have activities. So my thought on that is as much as we can safely offer, like, let's do it because I think it's a huge, provided we're getting the enrollment, it sounds like we are, but it's just a huge service to our community, right? Now. Especially as the days start to get longer and darker, um, you know, it's hard for people. So to have something at the community center where they feel safe, is just really a wonderful thing. Uh, I know for a lot of families. So I guess I'm just wondering, like, you know, like maybe let's be more specific, like the martial arts and the dance class. Is that just based on instructors not being available and not wanting to do it? Or is it, um, you know? Yeah, I can answer that. Some of the um, classes are limited in terms of they're not allowed due to the, to the, the contact that is, um, you know, inherent in, in the activity itself. So with some of the martial arts stuff, there, those are programs that are still being, um, uh, prohibited because the kids are coming into such close contact with each other uh, as as the nature of the program. So some of the so not everything's uh, is a green light for our programming. Um, the other limitation that we have right now is that um, our after school program is uh, due to some of the requirements. We have to split it into um, separate the separate pods as opposed to having all the kids in one spot at one time. We have to keep them separate in yeah. separate rooms. And our community center only has two rooms. And so when we're having um, a program that takes place during the after school hours, um, we sort of take up the whole, the whole space during those times. And then, you know, when we get into the evening, a lot of people aren't interested in, in kids programming after six o'clock. Um, and that's also when our adult programs start to take place. So room availability is our biggest constraint in what programs we offer, but there's also some of our traditional programs are not allowed to open up yet as well. So, um, uh, as far as the, the specifics of what we're, what we're planning on offering this winter, the list that I put in front of you is, is what we are working with right now. And um, as we are able to, you know, find other opportunities uh, to, to do things, it's, it's mostly going to be dependent on if we can find an indoor space to, to hold them. But right now, um, yeah, we're, we're pretty much booked in, our, um, in, in the rooms we have at this point. Okay, that makes sense if all the rooms are booked. It's funny, you know, I noticed my kids did the swim class and just anecdotally, there were two different families there who have not come outside of their situation for anything else, but they felt safe bringing their kids to the community center for an activity. So for those families, it was really a tremendous benefit because they've been pretty much holed up in their house. And so they're not doing play dates. They're not out and like, you know, doing stuff, uh, but having a structured activity with protocols and safety protocols in place, they felt comfortable bringing their kids to that. So um, oh, that's great. It's good to know. You know, a huge compliment to you and the programming that you've been offering that that people are, you know, coming for that and just doing a phenomenal job. So, you know, I think I'm just saying as much as we can keep doing that, it's huge benefit. Yeah, I appreciate that. And thank you for saying that. Yeah. And that's that's definitely our motivation, too, is to do as much as we can within the guidelines, you know, um, working with with. Um, the, the space that we have and the time constraints that we have. So that's, that's our goal 100% and we'll, we'll continue to update, you know, update you as if we're, um, as we are able to offer more programming or the programming changes for sure. Um, did anyone have any questions before I switch over to the parks maintenance um, side of the report? I have one more, but it's easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Great job making sure, of all, you know, everything operated this summer at a gain. Um, the gains obviously this year are a lot less than last year. So what impact does that have uh, as you look ahead, you know, over the next next year? What is what, what are the implications of that? I'll let Eric chime in on this one in terms of the, the greater uh, uh, big picture scenario. If, uh, Eric, you don't mind. No, I don't mind. We're still so from a bigger picture budgetary standpoint, obviously, there's a lot of projections that went into it because there's just more unknowns than we've ever had to deal with but we're still looking to finish uh, in the black so to speak you know so we're not looking at operating at a negative this year across the entire district um, am i anticipating that we're going to you know finish with the level of revenue above expense that we have past several years in a row no i still do anticipate that we're going to finish with some level of revenue higher than our level of expense um, you know, a lot of that, especially on the rec side, where we, don't, we have a, a larger amount of variable costs. So when we're running these smaller programs, they cost us a lot less to run them, both in staff primarily and then obviously in supplies. Um, but it's not necessarily an even split because for some of these things, because we have to do these separate cohorts with separate equipment and everything else, uh, 
we still, you know, have to spend a, a decent amount on supplies, and but not nearly as much as when we're running it three times the size. So big picture, um, we're still looking, you know, falling within projections. Yeah, I would say, if anything, even a little above projections because we really scaled it back from a budgetary standpoint and assumed uh, like there would be no pool happening. Well, we were able to operate the pool, so that was able to generate a little extra revenue, uh, uh, slightly more than what we're looking at as a, at an expense. Um, a lot of the programming Luke has been getting going has been uh, helping out on that level too on the rec. And then, you know, like on our fire and our park side, you know, those are really fixed on both sides. And, and luckily, uh, fortunately, when you look at it from like a municipality standpoint, um, our revenue is fairly fixed as well. Uh, we're not dependent on sales tax. We don't get sales tax. I wish we did, but that's where you see cities taking these huge hits because they're, you know, like Center Fell is losing 11, $12 million anticipated this year just in sales tax revenue. Our, our revenue streams are a little bit more stable and uh, our best projections are still uh, to be able to operate this entire fiscal year uh, not in the red, you know, so that we still have the ability to generate uh, at least some level of revenue higher than expenditure for an operating year. And we've done really good the last several years um, so we're just, we're sitting on a much better cash balance and cash flow than we ever have. Um, I think, you know, we should be okay. Uh, ideally, it would be nice to be able to continue to build it back up in future years so we can, uh, you know, keep those rainy day reserves building and everything else. Uh, you know, we do have mounting expenses coming. We do have uh, unfunded liabilities. Uh, we do have, uh, you know, capital expenditure needs uh, that aren't going to go away. Um, but uh, so we're keeping an eye on all of that. I've been working on the Q1 uh, uh, profit and loss report uh, just this week, and uh, we'll have that on the board agenda for the next uh, for the November meeting as well, so we can get a good look at where are we with Q1. Um, but keeping in mind that's you know it's not like okay we should have spent 25% and brought in 25%. We're we're more seasonal than that. We have a lot of upfront annual expenses that we pay all of in July that kind of skew the expenditure side, but then those are done and we don't pay those anymore for the rest of the year. So um, it, it, it make a long answer short, I think we're doing okay. And, and uh, we've put a lot of time and thought and effort into making sure that, okay, where, where are we, how are we gonna land um, while still being able to have some meaningful work for our employees as well as meaningful opportunities for the community. Okay, good. Great job managing through this. It's gotta be hard. Well, Let's, let's, uh, we're still in the middle of it by all stretches. So I appreciate that. Thank you. But uh, we certainly are not allowing ourselves to get complacent on it either. The gain last year was around half a million dollars. And this year was, you know, in the eight, I was feeling human on this to see the exact numbers. But, you know, so my thought is, well, usually those gains are put to some other use, right? So this year we don't have them, so then. Right, yeah, and that does make it tricky because you're looking at this from a snapshot as opposed to being able to see how it impacts across the entire district. Uh, but uh, we're still doing okay. I mean, as long as the rec programs, um, yes, they do get put to some other use and a lot of that lately has been just trying to build up our fund balances as well as our reserve balances. Um, so, uh, you know, those won't build as much as they have in the past years, but luckily, like I said, we've been very uh, diligent on that for the last several years in a row. So we're doing okay and we're not losing money. So we'll be okay. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Of course. Thanks, Eric. Yep. Um, on the parks and building maintenance um, side of the report, it's a big uh, project that that is uh, we're in the middle of right now is obviously the, the new um, parks maintenance facility and, and getting prepared for that that whole project. So I know um, you probably all noticed the big uh, cargo containers that got delivered a couple weeks ago um, to the far end of the park uh, will be part of our temporary workspace for the um, parks maintenance department for this next um, nine months to a year as we uh, uh, undergo demolition and then construction of the new facility. So um, the staff have been busy 
relocating all of their equipment, tools, supplies um, from the existing shop into these containers and um, getting them organized, putting shelving up and making it, um, trying to make it as workable a space as, as possible. Um, they're fairly bare bones, so they're really just big metal boxes. So we've been trying to add um, ways to, to organize and, and try to keep things straight in those um, to, to be able to work in. We have a, a small mobile office uh, being delivered hopefully later this week, if not early next week, where um, will be kind of the, the break room um, uh, office meeting space for the staff uh, for this for this period. And, uh, and then we'll be fencing all of that in and we'll have um, some of the other uh, equipment that's stored outdoors, will continue to be stored outdoors, but within that um, area in the north end of the park, um, away from where we'll be doing uh, the construction uh, project. So staff have been hard at work just trying to make that transition and get everything moved out of there in time to um, just get the whole site and facility ready uh, to be demolished. So that's been a big project and um, it's going well. Um, we'll. We'll be pretty much moved out. Um, I, we'll be moved out, everything will be moved out of there by the end of the week. Um, and uh, so hopefully uh, we'll have everything ready to move into and we'll be able to work out of there from, from then that point on. Um, you may have noticed uh, all of the, the pine, five of the, the five, five trees, right, Eric? Five pine trees um, were removed last week from the site uh, that will be in the way of where the construction will be taking place. And so um, just getting everything cleared out and, uh, and stripped and ready to, to go out to bid for that project. And I know Eric will probably want to add um, some, some notes into about, about that part of the project. If you want to chime in, Eric, on, on where we are on that. Um, sure. Um, so, I mean, just kind of backing it up, uh, God, what's been a, probably a couple of weeks now. Um, you know, it's just one of those things like these projects work when you finally hit one little milestone and you're able to tip over that domino the other dominoes start to go really fast. So a couple weeks ago, um, we entered into an agreement for demo with a qualified uh, licensed contractor. We had pushed out an informal bidding opportunity through the Marin Builders Association, through the North Coast Builders Exchange, um, as well as to some of our uh, uh, contractors we've worked with in the past or people who we, uh, who have asked to be placed on our uh, on our qualified contractors list? Um, so we received a handful of bids on that. They ranged anywhere from about twenty four thousand up to forty thousand. Um, so that everybody knows, um, at one point we had hoped to be able to move the park modular office, but as we looked more into that and we're trying to find moving companies and then looking at what the infrastructure was of that building that's been there for a little over 20 years now, um, you know, kind of came to the determination that that building's not going to be able to be moved. So it's going to be demolished, which is why we're bringing in a much smaller um, temporary office. Uh, kind of like what you would see at a construction site where our park guys will be, it's, it's wired for electricity, air conditioning, heating, um, phone, all of that. So they can have a, a, an actual workplace uh, in addition to that temporary site. So um, we entered into that agreement. It's about $24,000 to demolish everything, the building. Um, we brought out, before we took down the trees or before any of the demolition, we had to have a wildlife biologist come out to survey the area, make sure that there's no nesting or roosting happening, no special species were observed. We used the same biologist who did the original biological assessment for us uh, about three years ago. It's a company called Pernusky Chatham, and they had the same biologist, a woman named Jennifer. Uh, I always butcher her last name, so we'll just leave it. Musho. Yep, that's the winner. Uh, yep. She came. She came out and did the survey for us. Um, did a training uh, with uh, myself and the architect and some key staff, and gave it the all clear. So once we got that, um, that same week we had the tree company. It took them four days um, to completely get all those trees done, uh, chipped, stumps, ground, uh, and everything removed from the area so if you haven't been over there lately it looked vastly different um big and wide it's open right now keeping in mind that after construction the final phase will be to re-landscape that entire area and make the whole thing looking much more park-like uh redo a trail that's going to kind of mimic around by the creek bank um the other key piece that i'm working on right now is coordinating with pg e because they have to come out and do an electrical disconnect 
um, because the electric runs straight to the uh, maintenance facility itself. And then from there, an underground line that runs over to the modular park office. Um, that was supposed to happen last week. Then all the fire weather and the PSPS has happened. So we got pushed to tomorrow. I got an email today that says, hey, I'm going to have to confirm tomorrow morning for you. I mean, tomorrow for you in the morning. Um, because they're still dealing with now the latest round of PSPS restorations and line checks and equipment checks. And that's kind of an all hands on deck thing for PG&E. Um, then I am coordinating with the county and their building inspectors for a temporary reconnect so that we can still have power out there. And then um, our electrical vendor will run a line from there because um, they have to move the meter and do everything. Um, back over to where we're gonna have this temporary uh, park office at. So it's a lot of moving parts. It's a little bit of herding cats, trying to get everything to happen within a certain time window. Um, and then, you know, some of these force du jour events, uh, you know, just kind of keep pushing us back. Um, and at one point I was hoping to have the building inspector, PG&E and, uh, and our electrical contractor all out here at the same day. So that way they, the, inspector could sign off on it but now what i think it's just too hard to coordinate that at once um, especially with the, the on the inspector schedule i'm trying to match that with pg and e because i don't want to waste their time uh, we will probably just do the disconnect for now and then have the inspector come out when that is done there's already a box and a former meter location in the area so we're hoping that the reconnect will be real easy and then dc can run the line back over to where we need it for the time being um, that'll all be a temporary setup until the new facility is finished because they'll actually run electric directly to the new facility and put the meter right onto there. Um, so it's been a lot of moving parts. It's certainly keeping all of us busy, but it's also, uh, you know, actual tangible, visible signs of progress that are happening. So as soon as we can get the disconnect done, then we can set firm dates with the uh, contractor to come out and start the demolition in the hall. Um, so they'll be demoing and disposal and that should all happen no later than within the next couple of weeks, I would say. Um, ideally by mid-November, that is done. We're finishing up the building plan set, submitting them for what's uh, for plan check. So we can go through the initial sets on that. And as soon as we can get through the plan checks and know that we have 90% completed plans. There's always some marks or some adjustments that have to be made when it goes through plan check at the, from a building permitting standpoint. Then we can finalize the RFP and put an RFP out for actual construction. Bless you. Um, put an RFP out for actual construction and start to get some bids in on that. That'll probably be anywhere from a 30 to 45 day bidding process. Uh, those are sealed bids, so we won't be able to see them as they come in. They all get opened up uh, once bidding uh, submission is closed. So then we should have good ideas on where we stand and timing, but it's all certainly coming together. And right now our main focus is to get the existing facilities out before the rains come and have a temporary usable work set up for our park guys. I mean, one of the things I explained to the board at the board meeting was uh, the park guys have been working in less than ideal conditions for years. They're about to get even less, less than ideal um, with this temporary setup. I mean, you know, they're using two 40 foot metal cargo units uh, to store basically everything. They're gonna have a makeshift uh, office set up and a fenced out area. Uh, you know, going through the toughest months for them, which is winter, and they spend a lot of time outdoors. So they need, you know, places to be able to go in and be secure and, uh, you know, have the basic necessities like, you know, a warm room to go into and change out of wet coveralls, uh, wet rain suits, uh, um, so on and so forth. So it's, uh, uh, you know, my hat is off to them. They've been incredibly positive. They see the light at the end of the tunnel. They've been very uh, cooperative. They've been very helpful. Um, just in trying to get this done. They recognize that, you know, from the point that building is on, basically from now until a new building is built, they're, they're not going to have ideal working conditions. Uh, right, did you, I'm not sure if you gave an estimated date for breaking ground to actually start new construction? I don't have an estimated date on that. Um, I, we, I, I've stopped doing estimated dates because things are taking so long through the permitting stage, John. Um, everything is. I mean, it took us 
two and a half months to get a demo permit on it. And this yeah. was a very simple permit. So uh, once we get through this initial round of plan check, and then we can actually submit and start that, I'm estimating at least three months before we can get through the permit stage. Um, hopefully not, but if it's anything like what it has been, I'm not holding my breath for them to move that through quickly. Um, the permitting is really backed up right now, and I know they're trying to find staff, and you know, I believe uh, they're, you know, the CDA director actually retired, uh, Brian Crawford, and so they've just, they're, I don't want to say they're struggling, but they have more work than they have resources to get it done in a timely manner. Anyway. But does spring slash summer 21, is that reasonable? Oh, I think spring is reasonable and I think summer is unreasonable. We want to have this, oh. our goal is still to be able to have this thing done by, uh, by you know, ideally by the end of summer. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so that way we can be moved in and everything is set to go by next fall and, uh, uh, and then we're, it's, this project is a wrap and I'm taking a couple of days off. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, so that's our goal. You know, whereas we still have the same goal, breaking ground in spring as early as we can. Um, hopefully we can get this RFP out, you know, within the next month or so, um, allow plenty of time for that to circulate. We're going to push it out to every, uh, every builders association we could think of, and we'll get on some statewide lists for that as well. Uh, it's gonna be an attractive project, and I think we'll get some some good bids on it. Um, and I expect the full range of gamut on the bids to go from you know, uh, reasonable numbers to astronomically high numbers and everything in between. I mean, that's all we've ever kind of seen, and that's how public bidding tends to work. So, uh, and then we'll examine the bids for qualifications and then go with the lowest qualified bidder, which doesn't always equal the lowest bid because sometimes people submit bids and they're just not qualified to do the work. And so uh, we don't have to go with the lowest bid. We go with the lowest qualified bidder and that'll be a decision made and approved at a board level. So when we get the bids in, we'll present the bids in a public meeting um, along with a recommendation uh, based on our research and follow up to each, uh, each bidder. So yeah, that's our goal. Hey Eric, it sounds like the temporary office building is going to be smaller than. Yes. The, is that correct? So have we done what we can to maximize the comfort of that temporary facility for the the maintenance work for the guys that work there? Yeah, these things are like ready made. I mean, Luke did a lot of the legwork on this, and thank you to Luke. Um, you know, these companies deliver out to like construction sites, they can make them as into offices, you can, you know, they even have packages to bring in like office furniture, I, it'll be a nice setup. I mean, these are nice, well made situations. Um, the only setup is that it'll be dry, meaning, you know, there's no water, no sewer, but it's got power, it's got telecom, it's got air, it's got heat. Um, it's 24 by eight, I believe, which will give them enough space. Um, the one they have right now is 40 foot long, but that's also a bathroom and a little kitchenette area and then a separate little office that's more of just a storage room. So they're going to have to be economical in, in, in how they use their space. Um, but based on everything that we looked at, um, I, I feel good. I think the park guys feel good. I think Luke feels good that this is definitely going to be an adequate indoor setup for them to be able to operate on a, on a temporary level. Um, yeah. It's very important to us. These guys work hard. They do hard work. They do it out in the elements. Um, they have to have a place that they can escape that when needed. Yeah, no, and so definitely that's our goal. And so we'll be, we'll be customizing it as we, you know, once we get in there and see what, what we're working with and it's going to be tight, but um, we'll, we'll make it comfy and, and cozy for them. And um, yeah, we'll make it work. So um, thanks, Eric, um, for weighing in on all that. Um, yeah, if there's any other questions, um, you know, that's kind of the broad strokes. Like I said, it's a million moving pieces right now, but they're really coming together nicely. And uh, again, uh, you know, after a many years long process, uh, you're actually starting to see some tangible progress now, which is nice. Uh, and like I said, if you haven't been out there, it looks much different without those trees. Um, but, you know, keeping in mind uh, native breeze and that area is going to be re-landscaped when we're done. And I think it's going to look really nice. It really opens it up and opens up how we can design pathways and other more sustainable uh, landscape locations as well. Um, you guys don't have any plans to take out any redwood trees, do you? No, we don't have any redwood trees. 
nowhere, nowhere. I'm, I'm looking for some. For uh, uh, I have know, a big. I had one. I had one guy who actually came and uh, he didn't submit a bid. He came to look at the site. And when he saw how old it was, was hoping that maybe there was some good salvageable lumber in there. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then he just realized very quickly that, no, that's we didn't make it that well back then. And uh, he never submitted a bid. <laughs> but no, no redwoods. I'll keep you in mind if uh, yeah. there's anything. If you come across, I've, I've grabbed nine trees so far, and I'm staging them out in Nicasio for a project. So if you come across any, let me know. Excellent. Okay, I will. Um, well, else there was, um, that's, so that's the big, the big project taking up our time, um, and energy and attention right now. Um, I mean, meanwhile, the parks, uh, continue to, to need maintenance and, and clean up and, and the facilities, uh, continue to need a uh, regular maintenance. So I'm trying to fit all of that in while also, uh, completely moving, um, out of, uh, out of the facility has been a big challenge, but but it's been going well. So we've been trying to fit other little projects in as they've come up. Um, but the, the main means just to get into this workspace and then we can um, hopefully uh, very quickly start continuing on with, with um, the other planned projects and regular maintenance that we'll need to do, especially before the, the hopeful rains uh, get here and, and take up a lot of our time and energy. Um, we want to be fully moved in, fully enclosed, secure, and, uh, and then we can, you know, kind of get into the winter. So that's our big goal right now. But um, yeah, let me know if you have any other questions, uh, parks maintenance related. But that was that was mostly what I wanted to touch on in my report. Thanks, right, Luke. If, uh, Thank nothing you. else from the commission. Uh, any public comment? We still have any public with us? Uh, you do. You do. Um, nobody is raising their hand at this point in time. I think they're just observing. Uh, okay. So yeah, I think you're good. All right, then we'll move on to item number seven, just uh, items of interest from the commissioners for future agenda. I don't have anything at this time. Thank you, John. Okay, anything, Anna? All right, then. Um, there's nothing else. And I'll uh, take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. A second. second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thanks, you guys. Everybody. Thank Thank you. Everybody have a nice Thank evening. You Thank you. Good night. Uh, John, I'll, I'll follow up with you. Um, I meant to say something this meeting. Um, the next one is scheduled for November 24th, which is the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Um, so I'll probably throw out a query to the commission just to make sure people are going to be around uh, mm -hmm. and are able to have a meeting. Okay. You know, sometimes people travel that week. And there's no school that week. So uh, we'll see what happens. I'll be around, but I'll send out something to the entire commission just to make sure we have enough for a, uh, for a uh, forum. Okay. Cool. Thank you, guys. And that's December, which is the week of Christmas, and we never traditionally have met that. Week. Skip that one. If for some reason, we can't do November. We might wind up missing a couple months, but uh, we'll figure it out. Go home and eat. <laughs> all right. You guys See have you a guys. nice night. All right. Good night. Thanks all.